in the lead. This is a must-win situation for Wei Yi, making a comeback in Game 3. And it is Prague with the white pieces. What's going on? And the game has just started and we're going to see an opening we very rarely see. Oh, um, oh what's even the name of this? Is it the Old Indian? I played, right? this is the last game I played in, in a competitive tournament. I played this as black. Okay. Uh, and I did horribly. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> it's the Czech Benoni, I think, the isn't Czech it? The Czech Benoni? Okay. Yeah. And it used to be a bit of a joke um, with this opening in the English circuit. I mean, I know um, if something went wrong, like, you know, uh, like if you had a bad dinner or something, you'd be going, oh, it's a bit Czech Benoni. <laughs> or if, you know, or, or something didn't, you know, whatever. If something went wrong, it was the Czech Benoni. That's so what everyone not thought. Not a good reputation. <laughs> Very bad reputation as... as not been a very good opening for Black, actually. Um, and in order to win, it's a strange choice because you block up the centre of all your pawns there. Uh, so you don't have many pawn breaks and you give space away. So it's, uh, it's yeah, I, I wouldn't have s s expect this in a must-win situation. Yeah, I guess Wei Yi, his whole uh, concept is that he's keeping as many pawns, as many pieces on the board as possible. He's going to hope that Prague who does have a history, a track record of getting low on the clock. He's going to hope that Prague's nerves come into play, that uh, maybe those will be a factor, time trouble later on in the game. Here we see black is the first to castle, but white doesn't necessarily even need to commit his king. Because the centre is so blocked, as Simon mentioned, there are actually choices here. White's king sometimes goes the other way, or, or he delays that decision as long as possible. First, the bishops come out. Computers always love these positions for white because white has more space. If you look at that central structure, it's like an arrowhead. White's pawns uh, pointing in the middle of the board. Black's pawns are kind of, yeah, much more reactive. Um, Black later often tries to play on the right half of the board. I'm sure Prague will try and lock things down, though, as much as possible. He only needs a draw, so he's happy as long as the game is under control. You don't want to allow Black to break out. That's what it's all about right now. Yeah. Mm. yeah, but the breakout will happen. Um, eventually. Eventually. So a, a plan that I've just put down my cup of hot water is that, uh, you know, you can do the... Well, it has a name when you actually fianchetto your kingside and then you, re, you put your knight on that, the g7 square. So, for example, you could start with uh, retreating the black knight and uh, just to show the route, you put your knight on this g7 square I'm not sure the name either, Yovanka. But it right? has, uh, yeah, has a name? I think it does. Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> no, the first, nice. you know, the first time I saw it done, yeah. I was like, oh my goodness me, what is yeah. this? And then, you know, I think it was a grandmaster who did it. I was like, yeah. never seen that before. Yeah. And then, you know, when I kind of became a bit more familiar with the ideas, I was like, oh, OK. It's an it, official thing. It, I mean, I know uh, Aronian plays this way, Leveronian, sometimes the black, black pieces, but there's yeah. not many grandmasters uh, in the world who, who play the Czech Benoni. I mean, it's really rare. Uh, but putting the knight here is the only way you can try to play f5. But I really, I mean, I, I can under maybe understand a little bit by why Wei Yi is playing this way, because he wants to keep peace on the board. He's going he's going for the stupid knight manoeuvre. Um, <laughs> so I can understand why he does it. He keeps all the pieces on the board. He, he's hoping he gets some chances later on. But that's your only break. Your only break is to play that pawn. You have no other breaks. And if White just puts all his pieces to stop that break, I, I, you know, I think it's very hard to to break out. And the way that Prague's played this, he can he can play his pawn uh, to g4 at the right moment yeah. to to work against that. And it, I, it's going to be very hard to break out in this position. Yeah. You think he will get it? You think he will break out here? I mean, I, I possibly. <sighs> I mean, one idea as well in the current position, I'm slightly surprised he started with this pawn push because uh, you're normally you're supposed to start with the knight because here white could actually kick your rook to a bad square, the rook under attack, and now white could push the pawn even further. And how is this knight even getting... I mean, it's a bad square, g7, as we talked about, but how is this knight ever moving? Uh, I mean, I'm surprised Prague didn't take this opportunity. I thought this was quite a well-known pattern, and now yeah. the black knight just can't even use this, uh, use this circuit. Instead, he's gone for the same idea, uh, pushing forward this pawn, but at least the Black Knight, if he really wants, can still reroute around this way, and he does that. Um, but all, all White has to do here, surely, is put the bishop, just aim everything at that pawn break. Literally put everything to stop that pawn break, and then just wait. Yep. And there's nothing Black can do if you do this. You've got two pawn breaks, you've got the one that we talked about, and you've got the other one on the Queen's side, but they're both covered so well by everything, and you don't have to do anything. But maybe... This is where he's thinking, oh, Prague's going to do something because he's done something in everything else in the game. But, mm -hmm. I mean, you can sh it's really hard to break if, if you just play this way. I just think this is the perfect setup with all these pieces. Um, in a block position, they are poised, they're ready to, uh, 
to mobilize later um, if black does break out at the wrong time. This maneuver as well, I've seen this, as you mentioned, from Levon Aronian, the Black Knight coming to this square. We're going to see something very weird potentially. For example, if white just waits, um, I'm not sure exactly how, but um, we might see a situation where if white continues waiting, the Black Knight goes to this square and then uh, the other Black Knight goes to this square. It looks so weird. Um, remember as well that this Black Knight actually started on the other side of the board. Um, but black is just getting ready everything later for this pawn push. Um, as Simon said, often this pawn push is actually bad, even if you can arrange it, but you just want to scare white with the threat of this pawn push. Actually, often the just the idea of it is much, much uh, kind of scarier than the reality. And uh, in the current position, yeah, especially all of these white pawns, they just lock down the position and Prague has full control. But let's ignore... Uh, ignore the evaluation bar for a while. It's still difficult for white to find a plan. Apart from containing black, you need an active plan yourself. And uh, often white will maybe reroute the knight, start throwing pawns forward towards the black king. Um, just from my experience, at least, of these positions. But very tense. Very, very tense. Very locked up, this yeah. position. And, uh, well, where Yi has a specific goal in mind, that is to win this game. Nothing else will suffice. And uh, for our quiz of the day, we're asking, what is your goal in chess? And the prize is a lifetime repertoire of the Taiman of Sicilian. And uh, Fatima says that her goal is to become the first woman to play in the candidates and maybe one day even challenge the world champion. I love that, Fatima. You go for it. Uh, go for the top. Absolutely, but have um, uh, 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 Judith Polk. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> played in the candidates before. I, she played in a, a candidates tournament. Uh -huh. Yeah, and she played yeah. for the world championship title when the world championship was decided in a tournament. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Back was it 2007? She was certainly strong enough to, yeah, to, she could, to compete and you know for the world championship title yeah. at best. So yeah, 2005, just... 2007, around that time, she was playing in tournaments for the world championship. Um, so she's been close, but yeah, I mean, to take that final step to become world champion overall, that would be a milestone in chess. Yeah, we're all cheering for Fatima. Yeah, definitely. Yes. And uh, Ryan Baker, I like this. It's a very simple uh, goal, but it's a good one. It says uh, that their goal in chess is to simply never stop feeling the thrill I do when I sit down mm. on the board. Yeah, and, and uh, wow. What do you think would have to go back to the game? Because uh, White's uh, king has yeah, gone yeah. to the left. You're not happy, Simon? I, no. I don't see why you have to commit your king so much, because as soon as you commit your king in such positions, you just give your opponent a target. And yeah. he's got, I mean, maybe, you know, this the, the break on the other side of the board is now key. Mm -hmm. uh, Black should not be trying to play the one near his king, because, but he should be try, able to play uh, the B pawn up two squares. And, uh, you know, even if you sack a pawn in some position, you just need to open up lines over there. So I, I, I don't think Prag needed to put his king so quickly in, in, in that position. He could have uh, he could have been a bit more patient there. And Now look, the queen is coming. Yeah, it just seems a bit strange to give give uh, Wei Yi a target over there. Why give your opponent a target? So This is the target, the white yeah. king. And he's going back where he came from with the white rook. And I think maybe Prague not so familiar with the ideas here, but um, if we just backtrack to the moment, that key moment when he castled his king, I know a lot of top players here who would have actually spent two moves getting there. He could have had the same position. Uh, he would move his king one square forward. No matter what black does, he moves his king across. And if you imagine, for example, the black queen coming out, this is the position we have on the board, but here it's white to move. Mm. So basically, we've got the position on the board now with black to move, Wei Yi, by doing what Prague did, by castling queenside and only then pushing his king up the board, only then, um, sorry, in, only then in this position, bringing his rook back where it started the game, he's lost one move. Oh. Um, so it's a small kind of trick of the trade, um, which comes with experience, which comes from studying these types of positions, but he could have had the exact same position just with his king uh, so, already on the square with himself to move. Actually, talking about that then, is, is that what, uh, for example, his coach uh, Ramesh is sort of looking at? So after this game uh, and after this tournament, maybe that is something they will look at and, and work on? Definitely. I mean, they'll they'll go deep on every single move, every single decision. Um, I know Ramesh, he's really uh, one of the best chess coaches in the world. He's really detail-oriented and he will pick apart 
even Prague's wins. He'll mm. say, here, you could have won even smoother. Here, you could have kept more control. Um, here, you could have had the same thing, just with one extra move, like in this situation. Mm. I mean, I'm not even saying it's a good plan putting White's King on this side of the board. I'm inclined to agree with Simon. I think it's very risky to put White's King on this side. But if you could have done the same thing with one extra move, then it's, I mean, it's definitely a better version. So, mm. uh, meanwhile, Wei Yi's uh, rook coming across. Black is definitely trying to prepare that scary pawn push at some point. And uh, we will reach boiling point when it, it's just maximum tension. Wow. This Already? Point. 16. Yeah, and all 32 pieces still on the board. Oh. And they will likely remain on the board for a while yet. OK, now the Black Queen going back, just uh, preparing this Black Pawn push. Craig, Quite. he must have fantastic fighting chess index. Yeah. yeah. I think both these players. Yeah. But pu putting his king on that side, is that a fighting kind of move? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Gutsy. Yeah. Unnecessarily brave, maybe, when you only need a draw. Mm. Um, kings on opposite flanks always result in some kind of attack. But Simon, uh, oh, sorry. Sorry, uh, I was just going to say, you know, how realistic is it that way you actually manages to orchestrate that uh, breakthrough on the left? Because Pratnanda does have full control for the time being. Yeah, I mean, it's. It, I suppose it's in the long run. I mean, maybe you can try to put the bishop where the queen was uh, a minute ago and just you can get your knight, get everything around there. I mean, it's still very hard to do, still incredibly hard. So I don't think Prague's decision is is that bad because the position's so blocked, you can pretty much do anything. You can put your king anywhere and you're still going to break out. Um, interesting question as well, just uh, on the Chess24 chat, occasionally look at, and this is by our friend Chess in Numbers, and we're just talking about Prague and who has the most potential in the future to become world champion. Mm. And um, it's really hard to say. There's a lot of pressure on them. But we, we've mentioned Ali Reza, Farouja uh, and Prague. And it's very hard to compare them, of course, for obvious reasons. But Chess, chess Numbers, and I think it's our, our friend, uh, thinks that Prague um, does have the most potential if we're looking at, say, four to five years from now. So that's quite interesting yeah. just by the stats. He's a stat guy just saying that he, he thinks Prague is is, you know, really, really great chance. Obviously, he does. We can see how much he's improving or becoming world champion. But compared to other players, I, I don't know. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's interesting to see, isn't it? And, and yeah, to, to debate, really, who is going to be the world champion in four to five years. Yeah. It's interesting, though. OK, meanwhile, we have had a really dramatic pawn push on the board. But if we just see their stats there, Wei Yi and Prague. And on the tour ratings, Prague is actually ahead yeah. uh, by almost 20 points. But Wei Yi, when he was 15 years old, he was higher rated than Prague is now at 16. Uh -huh. So just having that potential, having the rating, having achieved all those goals doesn't necessarily mean you take the next step. Wei Yi is still fantastically strong. That's why he's in the quarterfinals now. But he's never made it into the world top 10. Okay. He never broke through to challenge the world top players on a consistent basis, despite breaking the 2700 barrier at only 15. So, so it is maybe about those years Pragnananda is entering now. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's all about staying with that love of chess, taking chances, playing as much as you can, um, being brave against the world's best players. Wei Yi maybe hasn't had the opportunities because in China the situation's been different. COVID, obviously, um, lots of factors. But um, you just have to keep improving, don't you? That that's the simple thing. And so many players, they just plateau, and there's not really any reason why they plateau. Sometimes they just can't get past a certain point. So you've just got to keep improving at this level, and uh, it's very hard to do that when you get stronger and stronger. It yeah. gets harder and harder to Definitely. improve. So. And some? Yeah. Sorry. I was going to say, sometimes it's like David says, you know, sometimes it's just unfortunate that you reach this level, but maybe there are other talents as well, you know, so you don't get the same attention on the opportunities. And, uh, well, yeah. big stuff happening in the Pragnanda game. A dramatic movie, is that yeah. Yes. Big moment because we have seen the first trade of pawns. Uh, so all 32 pieces were on the board uh, up until move 18. But uh, now, after this pawn push by White, we have reached boiling point, as mentioned. And now, Black can no longer avoid any trades. If Black just waits and continues manoeuvring, then White will simply push the pawns forward, and this is a pawn storm. White will steamroll at Black <coughs> on the side of the board, pushing everything forward. And this Black King is not going to survive when things open up. Uh, so, in the end, Wei Yi had to simply trade. He had to swap off this set of pawns, and now the Black Knight goes back, because White is the one with breakthroughs. We talked about those pawn breaks. This pawn break for black is controlled for now. Uh, white has, I think, five, uh, if you include pawns and pieces, five uh, pieces controlling this square, so black can't break out yet. Instead, it's white's pawn break, which is about to happen, that is the key. So black retreats the knight in anticipation of that. 
And the question is, does White step forward now? Does White break open the centre? Is he ready? Or is the king a bit too open? Uh, for example, we could see a trade. Maybe Black will occupy this outpost with his bishop, with his knight. It still looks great to me for White, I must admit. Or will we see Prague maybe continue to build up? Or maybe even throw some pawns down the board towards the Black King? So many options, actually. Definitely. I mean, my first thing to, instinct was to uh, initiate the Harry attack. But then I've kind of changed my mind, I think, pushing in the centre. Yeah. Just is just a, such a harmonious move. Suddenly the knight has a nice square on the on the e4, and uh, I don't. Way he probably has to capture that pawn. It can't. Yeah. You yeah. can't let such a fantastic pawn stay on e5. But then the bishop gets that beautiful long diagonal attacking the rook. Um, this looks fantastic. And of course, you have your long term trump, the protective pass pawn in the middle. Yeah, White yeah. will win any end games with this uh, this pawn. Yeah, I mean, I mean it, it might. Fantastic. It does. I mean, I suppose after the exchange, you know, you, you give away a square, maybe the d6 square that Black can put a piece on. Uh, and I mean, it could even be a, quite a clever, um, clever time to have a look and think, what's Black's next move? Because um, if Black moves that knight again, which has just moved towards the queen side, which is not a ridiculous move, trying to support the pawn push, then your your idea becomes even stronger. And I'm just thinking, what other move can Black play? If Black moves the bishop then I think, you know, to, to try get on the diagonal, then maybe your pawn push becomes even stronger. Um, what's Black's next move? I can't see what Black's next move is. So maybe we can do your idea, but just prepare it. Like, you know, mm -hmm. just asking Black, what are you going to do next uh, in, a better, in a better position here? I still think it's very strong. I mean, I'd be tempted to play it straight away as well, but just, just it's always worth asking what your opponent's going to do next as well, I feel. Yeah, because the if thing. they don't have a move, you can improve. You just improve, yeah, that and just, yeah. Do you, oh, <laughs> that's it. It's, <laughs> you no can, move. Don't have a improve. move, improve. Beatbox, do you want the beatbox player? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, uh, I got some criticism from my, from my husband last night, and he Did said, you, you know, you know, uh, so do you should have done a rap. Should, I was okay, really well, let's try. Looking forward let's to try you doing now. A rap. Let's try the now. Problem, the, the problem is, I, I don't know how to rap. Well, the only rap that I can do is the, the rap to wannabe, and that's just not great. Oh, oh, that's a great one. Which one's Yo, that? Yo, I tell you what I want. What I really, really want. So Don't tell me what you want. What I really, really want. I wanna. I want. <laughs> <laughs> I really, really want a zig a zig. Uh, that's a rap. As it goes, here's a story from A to Z. If you wanna get with me, you better listen carefully. You got M in your face. Da 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 Easy free. She doesn't come for free. And as for me, you'll see. There you have go. A it's, it's very nice. Not yeah. quite Eminem, but no. nice. <laughs> no, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, anyway, yeah. we do have action <laughs> on the board. Yeah. I can't yeah, believe I just did well. that. Okay, the pawn has moved forward to the centre. Next time, fresh Prince of Bella. <laughs> yeah. Ah. And, oh. uh, yeah, very good. The breakthrough has happened. So Prague deciding that this was the one moment to pull the trigger and break open the centre. What? I don't know. I think he should have prepared it more, but. Uh, I was gonna, just wondering what spice scale you'd be. <laughs> I'm just As for me, you'll see. What spice scale would be? What, would you be? Jerry. Sporty? You'd be Jerry. Ginger. Ginger spice. Ginger spice, OK. the coolest. I, yeah. I thought Simon would be ginger spice, no? I could try. <laughs> oh, I could try, yeah. <laughs> Who would we all be? Ginger spice? I, yeah. I don't know. You, you, probably, will be you already said it, haven't you? So <laughs> said, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but it's clearly you, though, Simon. Yeah, it'd have to be me, wouldn't it? Um, so, I don't know. Uh, sport, who's sporty? Melzi. None of us. Kaya's sporty. Kaya's sporty. I'd love to be sporty, but I know how to do her kick. I've been yeah. practicing. Okay, that's next on yeah, the list yeah. of things to see. Okay. <laughs> so. Meanwhile, we are, we are <laughs> seeing at the um, bar, yeah. as Kai prepares that uh, sporty <laughs> kick. Uh, we're seeing bishops come off the board, knights coming off the board, but is Prague rushing? He's tr trading off the pieces, and that uh, goes against conventional wisdom. Your opponent's really cramped. Black had no space. Black had no squares for pieces. Simon mentioned Black had no moves almost, and now he's trading pieces, liberating Black's, uh, mm. Black's army. Don't trade pieces when you have extra space. That's the uh, that's how the saying goes. And right now, let's jump in. We did see uh, we actually predicted up to this point Black occupying this square with this bishop. And I thought here, okay, maybe just bring your rooks to the centre. This rook, this rook, just improve your pieces. Nope. Instead, he trades, improving this Black Knight in the process. And now he jumps forward. I think he's too hasty here, Prague. I'm a bit worried about the trend of this game. Now the Black Knight goes back. He should not kind of rush and continue trading, exchanging things off because black actually gets a really nice knight 
on an outpost here. Knights are great blockaders, and this knight has influence on both sides of the board. Black is actually almost ready. He's grabbed a pawn. Yeah, he's got greedy, though. Uh. He's grabbed a pawn, and is this going to backfire? Because actually, suddenly, after this rook move, look at the white king. Look where it stands. It's on the same line as this black rook. Lots of targets. And uh, maybe it's good objectively for white, but you're losing a lot of control, taking massive risks. If this white knight returns, then at some point there will be this pawn break to watch out for, trying to crack open the line towards the black, uh, towards the white king. And uh, I just got distracted there because we've seen another couple of moves. Instead of going back, he traded off, and uh, he's lost a lot of quality in his position. White is one pawn up now, and he's playing positionally, but it's all about the white king. Maybe he's just got things under control. Yeah, I, I still need to draw, I feel remember. That, that's true. But somehow I feel that uh, Wei Yi will be in his element here. Mm. You know, he thrives in these tactical positions. And there, is, there are chances for White to go wrong. But it does look like, having said all that, that Pragnanda is... Well, his position looks quite solid. Yeah, he is one pawn up and he's defending everything for now, but those black knights are going to come. I mean, the thing is with these positions, the computer obviously says that Prague's better. It has done from move three. But um, just look at the white king. The white king's over there. You, you can that, that knight manoeuvre you just mentioned, David, that's coming around to the, the queen side and there might be a B pawn break. just feels a little bit uh, like black has some chances at least. So. On the dark squares, white is really vulnerable. So if the black knights can jump around on dark squares to go for that white king, potential chances... It's, I mean, it's in practical terms at least much easier to play for Wei Yi than Prague, uh, especially compared to five moves ago. I still think Prague is doing great in a long game, in a classical game. If he had one hour, two hours, he would win. But wow, okay, he's going for the attack. Um, yeah, he's not scared at all. It's That's not safety first, is it? It's no. just not safety first at all. Oh, and, uh, uh, I don't know, yeah. I don't like this. And the reason I don't oh. like it is because the rook can like, yeah. go and attack the queen and suddenly there's another avenue did you see Wei Yi as well? He was a bit slouched in his chair. Suddenly he got up. kind of got up and... Uh, Look, maybe even move the queen two squares forwards and, and mm. threaten some immediate ideas of uh, just blasting the position. I was going to say this move, oh, guys. Oh, I was oh hello. Say, this is the first move on yeah. my radar as soon as the evaluation bar shot. Um, and Black is using this pin. Uh, let's jump in and uh, explain. Because it's all about this file. That's where the white king is. That's where Black's major pieces are. So break open that file at any cost. This knight jump. What a move. Um, trying to jump in and give a nasty check. If white continues pushing, for example, this is a royal fork and uh, white's queen drops off. So you have to remove this knight from the board, stop it getting in. But if you take it with your pawn, the black queen breaks through. This is going to end in disaster. If you take with the knight, then now, OK, again, your king lacks its best defender. Mm. And it's all about this file. The black knight about to jump and take this pawn as well. I think we're going to playoffs. You think That's we're going to play? I, think I reckon. So oh wow! Yeah, you think Wei Yi will actually win this? Yeah, I, I mean, so. I, I think Pragnanda's lost control. I think, I mean, the only oh, thing man. that I would be do, doing here is, if I were white, I would be desperately trying to swap off queens. Is this yeah. possible? Can I so bring your queen to the edge of the yeah, board? Yeah, to maybe. the edge of the board, but I mean, try to challenge. But uh, of course, Wei Yi will say no, having none of that, and step forward two squares, and then what? Ooh. What is the white? Doing. Just scared. I know, it's very scary stuff. This is the dream attacking combo, the queen and knight, and they're coming towards the white king. <clears throat> yeah, Simon, I mean, I think you might be right. It's just the momentum. We, we mentioned that, yes, white is still in maximum control. White was still doing well, but things have been slipping in black's favour slowly. And I think this last move, this star move, I'm not sure I would have found it, but as soon as the evaluation bar went that way, it's like, OK, there's something, and it's all to do with the white king. Time, time is also uh, not great. Another little factor playing against Prague, but it's just uh, his position is really loosening up now uh, and uh, it's, it's now getting to a very critical stage. I mean, he's still OK, mm -hmm. so he, he could certainly hold this one, but he's got to uh, he's got to find some very accurate moves. And it's very hard to defend, you know, such positions. I mean, computers can do it, but humans finding good defensive moves when your king is getting more and more exposed, very tough. I mean, was this a brilliant opening choice? Um, from Wei Yi, who, who knows that this opening is the Czech Benoni. Oh, it's, it's a bit dodgy, dodgy, it's a bit Czech. But was it just, a, it's worked out very well at the moment, I think, to give him chances with the black pieces. Yeah, let's see Prague. Okay, he's shaking, he's trying to get the energy pumping. But getting energy pumping when you're on the defensive suddenly, I'm not sure it works that well. And uh, okay, he does decide to trade the Knights, but oh no. This uh, is not going to end well, surely. 
things are opening up towards the White King. White has lost the best defender, the Knight. The Knight is the King's best friend. And also, pawns are hanging on both sides of the board now. Um, the White A pawn at some point might be nice and juicy. Temporarily, the Black Knight is under threat. You can just move it, though. You could just retreat it to go forwards if you want to. Yeah. Uh, there could be something more violent. I mean, I might uh, flick in an exchange of pawns here because I want to open up the White King as much as I can. Yeah. I mean, that opens up another line, so why not flick it in? But this is the move that at some point is just very worrying. That knight coming to the central square is hitting everything. I mean, it's such a strong knight, that one. Yeah. And uh, how wild is it if White just goes, I'm going to ignore it, and uh, says, well, attack. carry on. <laughs> yeah. And he hasn't done this. Um, maybe you're right, Ivanka. Maybe he had to try that. But OK, he's lining up against this pawn, but this is easily defended. I mean, Black wants to put his knight in, this, uh, in the centre anyway. And he not only attacks the queen, attacks everything, but he defends this key pawn. And oh, yeah. Prague is holding things to get together here by a thread. I don't know if it's going to work, though. As Simon mentioned, at your will, you can capture a pawn, trade off a set of pawns. Look how open this king is, though. I mean, you don't want to move the knight yet, you don't want to allow a trade of queens, but surely there's something. Just my spidey senses are tingling. But if his uh, king is a little open and uh, all he needs is a draw, why should he not trade uh, of queens so then? Black shouldn't trade queens oh, here. Okay, sorry. So black cannot move the knight, for example, to take the white bishop, because then there will be a trade of queens. Okay. And white's king is actually great in the center if queens disappear. But uh, yeah, black should be the one keeping queens on the board in the current position. Uh, if we go back to it, black needs to keep this piece. Uh, so yeah, maybe there's a small uh, small problem for black because this knight can't move without allowing that queen trade. How do you move the queen while keeping an eye on your knight? And I, I'm uh, looking at ideas of taking the pawn once and trying to play the other pawn to that square, which I, I don't think really works, but it's the kind of thing you, you're naturally looking at, just really violently trying to uh, open open things up. By I mean, any uh, means necessary towards the king. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it probably on pass on works yeah. well there, but it, it's kind of close because you, you do open up more lines and your knight drops, but it's, it's you know, that, that white king, it's just, it's just a little bit loose. If Prague holds this, I'll be very impressed, but... Yeah. Saying I mean, that way, he has to find the next step here in the, in, in the initiative. What about, for example, moving your queen out of the way just so your rook can stare down on this line? And I'm looking at lines, for example, black's queen threatening to take this pawn because the c-pawn is pinned. If white now attacks this knight, then suddenly um, the black knight, at the very least, could jump out the way. I know this would have resulted in a queen trade, but um, maybe you can go for something like this. I mean, it just feels like there's something around this white king. I can't see it yet. Way you can't see it, see it yet. It's getting close, though. It's getting very close. Well, we can't see anything. Maybe it's just uh, improve. Okay, rook across. So he defends his knight, as Yvanka says, improve. When you don't know how to move, improve. And uh, now, the, because the black knight is defended, the black queen is free. Uh, so now she can come up the board, or maybe the black rook can start taking this pawn defended by the black queen. It's falling apart wow. for Prague. He needs to find a way to swap queens or keep control. Three minutes Somehow. on the clock, and these two have played some very long games. Right now, they have played chess for four hours, so they're going above four hours now. Will sort of fatigue become an issue as well? I mean, Wei Yi is sitting, but both of them are actually playing at night. Yeah, I mean, for Wei Yi, it's what, 4 a.m. now? Yeah. Exactly 4 a.m. Yeah. And uh, Prague, it's almost that late. I mean, when you're young, maybe you can adjust. Yeah. Um, as the years tick by. Oof. <laughs> Not so easy, but yeah, I'm sure they'll be full of adrenaline right now, at least. I mean, if it goes to playoffs, if it goes to Blitz, Armageddon, then it's definitely a test of stamina. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I would say Wei has been very calm and, and, and you know, seemed to be in control the whole day. That's a and, trademark of the yeah. Chinese school of chess, yeah. Always Maybe so that's calm. an advantage now, with, you know, clocks ticking, adrenaline running. Yeah. And he's <laughs> playing quickly as well. Yeah. Clearly Wei Yi's not tired if he's playing this fast in a complicated battle. Seven minutes up on the clock. I wonder how they train the, ch the Chinese players to remain mentally calm because they do generally, when you see them playing, uh, all the top players, they do seem to remain very calm at the board, very collective, whilst, uh, you know, um, that's not the case for, for other countries, uh, particularly. Yeah, I mean, uh, they, I haven't really seen a nervous... I imagine they play a lot you know. of uh, blitz and fast time controls. Yeah. But, uh, you know, Ding Lorin has always been famous in the chess world for actually not... for being relatively expressionless. You know, he's yeah. winning, losing, in time travel, seconds left. It's the same mm. over the board. But online, 
I've, uh, we've, we've seen Ding Laurent many, many times be super, uh, you know, emotional. You know, he's been shaking his head. You know, he's been quite Maybe not at the level of, like, Magnus Carlsen. No, and, no, no, no. You know. No, but, you know, it's, it's very nice is what I'm trying to get. It's yeah. very, very nice to see the players a bit more. give a little bit more. And Absolutely. so we can see, oh, yeah, this is really affecting them. And, uh, well... Ragnander moves his rook again. Yeah, it's very loose now. White's queen is not defended. Again, it just feels like there's some tactics in the position and uh, Wei Yi trying to look for them. Still trying to work out as well, for example, what happens if Black's rook comes and takes a pawn? Again, your move, Simon. Do you flick in a capture, a trade of pawns in front of the white king first? It's hard to hard to work out the differences, right? Yeah. It feels like it's a step in the right direction, right, to capture pawns. Yeah. The Open one, it up a bit more. Yeah, yeah. the one so. downside in this current position, maybe behind trading pawns, is that the white bishop can now take back. I'm just slightly scared that at some point the white pawn will push forward and the white bishop is on this diagonal. Um, just while this pin exists, black unable to take this bishop because the black queen would fall. Um, so just temporarily, I'm hesitant, but what about this move? Rook takes pawn. Mm -hmm. Just... Uh, hoping that after rook takes, um, this is the only variation I've worked out, maybe there's a flaw to the plan, but after the white rook now goes and captures the black knight, it looks like white is a whole piece up, but suddenly after one check, where do you put your king? There's no safe square. No matter where you go, um, if you go back, forward, the black queen will actually drop down to this square, and if this is a skewer, once the white king moves, the queen will take the white rook. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, here Black would actually, oh, sorry, maybe even take with his own rook. Black here is ahead of material and the White King is not going to survive for too much longer. Yeah, this looks, yeah, this looks good. Really I, very strong for Black. I, in fact, I, I saw this move, but for some bizarre reason, I only, I only thought it worked if the White King went onto the C line to C3 square. Uh, There's a bit of a blindness there. But okay, That so, was the variation with the C3 square. Yeah. Um, okay, the uh, Black Rook moves across trying to take this pawn. Okay, interesting. Trying to utilize this pin that the Black Queen has on the White King now and very logical as well. Centralizing all the black pieces. They're all protected, coordinated. These three pieces now. Yeah, lots of open lines about to come. Interesting stuff. <laughs> Pregnant I would hate to be in his shoes. Two minutes left on the clock as well. Yeah, and uh, it does seem like Pragnanda's actually struggling to come up with a plan. He's just in complete defensive mode. Yeah. Just, uh, what, what to do? I don't know. I mean, uh, push a pawn, I think Harry probably. I mean, I would... Uh, hang on, is there some tricks? No? Is black not threatening white central pawn? Yeah. Ooh. I mean, can he not just take the pawn now? I mean, uh, what's the idea behind this last move? I mean, uh, black's last move seemed to set up a threat. Uh, you've got to look at your opponent's last move always, see where it's pointing, and that can't that rook just take the pawn now? Maybe there's some bishop there some tricks. OK, we have to jump pawn. in. You guys are mentioning yeah. a lot of moves there, so um, if the black rook takes this pawn, utilising this pin, then, Yvanka, you think maybe bishop takes pawn, jumping out the way... I haven't worked it out, but maybe there's something this black rook. there. I'm not 100% sure. I don't see it after the black rook just captures the white rook. This bishop surely is going to just drop off the board on the next turn. Yes, it will. Um, you can give up your bishop for a pawn, but I don't really see the idea behind it. I don't see the idea behind price move. Rook takes pawn. Just winning a pawn. I'm not sure White could have done much, though. In, in the last position, it was actually already looking like it was creaking somewhat. He plays it. Um, and he's got his pawn back now, so he's not even a pawn down. Seems like he's got the attack, the safer king. This is this is going all, all, all his way, I think, yeah. at the moment. Okay. Definitely. Prag needs to play to for survival now. The White King is on the brink. I just checked and it says that uh, you have to make the move that Pragnanda has just played. Wow, it's only the move. only move to survive. Trying to get some counterplay of, of some sort. So Prag is trying to distract Wei Yi. He wants to push his pawn one square further forward, actually cage the Black King. For example, if Black is a bit slow retreating, then White's Queen now wants to snake in and trap this Black King. At least now some, counter, uh, some counterplay forces Wei Yi to think defensively for the first time in this game, really. And, OK, this is the current position. There must be a breakthrough here. Trade a set of pawns, potentially, or... I don't know, double up your rooks. There must be something here for Wei Yi. It looks beautiful for Black, this White King. Just no man's land. Yeah, I mean, there's one, one very sharp line. If you double rooks, I mean, that, that looks like the most natural to me. You're threatening the bishop on d3. And now I'm wondering, can you play h6 anyway? I, I don't think you can. Um, but, you know, it's 
possible, possible, uh, with the idea of um, just sneaking the queen in with some checkmate ideas. So uh, this is certainly something which is worth you know worth calculating now. But mm -hmm. be very careful if you're going to play with fire like this. So. Yeah. yeah, very, very careful. And it all depends on whether this uh, this bishop is just going to fall or whether black is in time. It's a race. Suddenly white's attack is actually quite quick. Um, so I like Prague's last move a lot. Yeah, going on the counter. As uh, you guys mentioned, maybe this was just necessary, giving away a pawn in the centre. It's not intuitive, but going um, for some attack can, against the black king. Can you also plan to go like pawn takes pawn? I don't know whether that has any... Yeah. And it all depends here on whether the white bishop can take back. If the white bishop can't take back, if the pawn has to recapture, then this black rook is just coming in. Looks like that's winning, but maybe bishop takes pawn. And he's, OK, we're going to find out. He's opening can blacks, up. Yeah, it's opening up. Um, can black's rook come in behind anyway? Um, suddenly, at least white has some counterplay against this square. Yeah, I don't like that decision from Wei Yi. Maybe he, maybe he just couldn't see anything better. He's getting low on the clock as well. Suddenly, white has counterplay against the black king. Interesting. It is a must-win situation for Wei to take it to tie breaks. These two have played some long, long battles, and here they are fighting it out again. And is Wei Yi throwing it away, making some mistakes? I mean, I think both players are just getting nervous at this point. <sighs> They've done so well, ice cold, to even get this far. But it's understandable if nerves do <clears throat> creep in. Oh, okay. absolutely. A trade of rooks to start. And the computer hates that one. And um, will we see white just recapture this rook? If so, which way? Does he take back with a king? Does he take back with a rook? I mean, there's other stuff to work out here, maybe. Which way? OK, he takes back with the king, allowing the queen to give him a check. Suddenly, it's level material. White's king, though. <laughs> the question is, is it a target? Maybe it's just safe. All the pieces are coming off the board. Can, can yeah, you go for the earlier plan that you mentioned, where the queen kind of gives a check on the d6 square and then snakes into the a3 square? You know, keeping... Oh, no, but there's uh, bishop take... Sorry. OK, yep, just to show your Sorry, idea, Yavanka. Yeah. Um, if the queen does give a check, the white king moving, the, white, the black queen coming in. This is, this is very relevant, though, because here it does look scary, the black queen coming to give some checks, but uh, we mentioned white's bishop improving enough to c cause some chaos of its own destruction. Bishop takes pawn is a check, and if the knight recaptures, then the black rook will fall. Yeah. Prague, Prague surviving well. I mean, yeah. I, I was very, uh, really well. I was very pessimistic about his position, as in it looked horrible. His king's so weak, but he's finding, he's finding great moves to. Uh, well, he could go wrong in so many different ways, and he's finding very, very good moves to, to not allow any tricks to occur to his position, and it he's, seems. He's doing it with pins. If you look at this diagonal, that's one pin. If you look on the central file, that's another pin. If you look at the Black Knight, that's another pin. Uh, so it's literally three pins here. And uh, uh, somehow Whoa. he's just, yeah. It's, he's been walking a tightrope, Prag, but he's done it really well. He hasn't fallen off that, uh, fallen off that tightrope yet. I've been actually working on pins on Chessable. They have yeah. uh, some nice uh, move repetition practices with pins. Recommended. Yeah. Pin and win. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Prague's definitely been working on those pins, uh, especially in this game. And Wei Yi, look at the clock times as well. He had, what was it, seven, eight-minute advantage just a few moves ago. That's disappeared. Wei Yi looking concerned. Yeah. I think he might have, uh, might have let this one slip. Yeah, I mean, it, there still must be some chances here, though, surely, with, with pieces, so many pieces on the board. But White's starting to get his own threats as well. Yeah. So it, it's, you know, you have to do something soon. And yeah, I guess you have to maybe kind of consolidate a little bit because everything is working because of the pins. And I was thinking this move, but I thought maybe it might be a good idea to flick in a check first. Mm -hmm. And uh, OK, Pragnanda's threat of uh, bishop takes pawn has been covered in some lines that there's bishop takes pawn. Yeah, I mean, you could go h6 here and maybe threaten it again in a weird, very strange way. Uh, if you know, if I flick the pawn to trap in the black king, maybe we can show that. I I, I start I start arranging some very strong threats. I mean, the first one is just bringing the queen in front of the black king to checkmate. But I think bishop takes pawn check uh, is is also uh, now a, again a threat because I've trapped the black king in. So that that to me just well, I love using the h pawn, don't I? But that to me looks just a very useful move to play in the position. Yeah. Uh, I think if he has the time, if he feels he has the luxury, uh, then definitely trap in this black king. And remember, that's the trend nowadays. You push Harry the H-pawn, 
as we've just seen from Prague, in order to create potential mating nets. You don't necessarily want to open up lines, you just push your pawn here. Firstly, for end games, it, this pawn is only two squares away from promotion, but also this black king now, there's gonna constantly be threats against it, and it might look uh, contradictory here, but black's king is maybe even worse than white's king. White's king, at least it has a lot of air to breathe. It's a target, for sure, but it can wander around, it can run away. Black's king, definitely in a cage mm. at the moment. Prague doing great here. I mean, yeah. really, really impressive so far. Uh, I mean, uh, now now Wei Yi is under a little bit of pressure. He's got two threats he must stop. I think you can check with a queen, for example, to stop both of those threats, but yeah. then what you do next, because the white king would improve its position. And then the new threat will be on the board, and that's just uh, sliding the rook across yeah. to attack the queen. That's right, yeah. And uh, back rank mate is a problem. Yeah, as well as, well as maybe bishop takes yeah. pawn still, actually. So there's, yeah, that, but moving the rook is very strong, isn't it? Yeah. So it's actually, you know, maybe maybe trickier for black all of a sudden. Uh, um, yeah. yeah. I mean, if both sides drop under one minute, it's just completely random. It's a lottery. Yeah. I think we'll see a checkmate or a checkmating idea on the board against one of the kings. Just not sure which one. Great move from Prague, locking in the black king. And that back rank checkmate we talked about earlier today, um, putting, putting, pushing a pawn forward, creating some luft, um, is one way to deal with it. But Prague has basically made that idea irrelevant, uh, taking away this key square. So yeah, it's, uh, uh, wow, it literally both sides on 50 something yeah. seconds now. Oh, and Wei obviously knows he has to win this game, desperately looking for a way to do just that. But the clock is ticking. Oh, there's, I uh, just spotted another trick that uh, Wei Yi should not move the knight. No, certainly not. No, that would be, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, be a bit painful, that would say. Uh, <laughs> the black knight moves, then the white queen just captures the black queen. And checkmate coming. Yeah, yeah was, was, there's also queen takes pawn. Oh, even okay. nicer. <laughs> even oh. more brutal. <laughs> okay, I'll go knight d7. Just, <laughs> just, to, <laughs> you know, just to show your idea. Uh, yes. Yeah, Ivanka, for example, if the yeah. black knight did, dares to move and capture this bishop, um, then queen takes queen is winning uh, with a nasty checkmate, back rank checkmate. But uh, Yvanka mentioned something even more brutal. If the black knight, for example, moves Five seconds. somewhere else, oh, then queen oh, takes oh, pawn, oh, oh, oh. will end in checkmate. Will we see this on the board? He got, he's got, how many no, seconds did he have left he there? He actually captured the pawn. Wow, he had two seconds, two seconds. left. Ooh. Unbelievable. And he's <laughs> taken this pawn. Now the big question is, what is happening? Oh, I mean, I was going to say a move that might be a mistake here, but I don't know if the queen oh. comes in trying to checkmate. It's so this complicated. Is so it's so complicated. risky. Okay, so first of all, we have to work out the checks. So you have to be methodical, but you. Do okay, you, he hey. hasn't played it. He's played Simon's idea. Bishop uh, takes pawn check. This looks very logical as well. Just trying to exchange off. And and now he's trying to trade, but is the white king open here? It feels so open. It does. Yeah. There's Both kings check. very exposed, but blacks to move first. Black moves first. Yeah. He can flick the checks in first, but maybe the white king can hide. For example, if the black rook gives a check, Two the white king. <laughs> the white king moves towards safety on this side of the board. Okay, it's moved to this corner. Now the black queen. Where does it give check? The white king. Maybe it's going to hide. I mean, this is a miracle if Prague holds this one. Two seconds. Okay, so he's <laughs> checked on the A3 square. But now, but now you can block with a queen if you, if you, uh, uh, you, you know, just try to keep everything need, safe. I mean, that looks all right. As well? Yeah, play it safe. Bring yeah. back the white queen. Yeah, I mean, if you if you can move the king, you. Yeah, okay, yeah, he's okay, gone so for he's it. Gone for it. I'm so like... so impressed with absolute lack of fear. It's incredible, isn't it? I mean, Prague playing this way is. Remarkable, I think. The key is that the black rook cannot go across and check the white king now because the white queen covers any square the black rook wants to check from. Mm -hmm. So black's queen is the only one which can give check. You have to keep giving check because if you give the move to white, white is going to checkmate the black king. And here we go. There's no way to continue the attack. Incredible. We might see I, a draw by pep, uh, perpetual check here. Yeah, Repetition of moves. I think this is going to head to draw. I, I've, personally, I, for, I think this is one of the most impressive Prague games I've seen. Um, not necessarily from the way he played the opening or the early middle game, but when his position started to look difficult, the way he played so accurately, lots of people would crumble. But he's 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 played this uh, so well from a tricky position. Um, going to see a result any yes. moment now. Wei Yi looks resigned to the fact that this game is going to be a draw and Prague yeah. is going through to the semi-finals. Black has nothing else to do. You have to give checks to avoid checkmate. And there we go. Third time we've seen this position. It's over. A <sighs> marathon match between these two ends up with Prague Nananda, the 16-year-old, making it through to the semi-finals. He finally stops.